Chief Minister Siddharamaiah has had a relatively clean track record in his four decades of being in politics. This is the first time that charges of financial irregularity are being leveled directly against him and his family. Uh, the BJP obviously wanting to scale up the protests given that they've been under pressure after the Lok Sabha elections. Uh, the Chief Minister though in his defense says that this happened when he wasn't in power and therefore it's not right to blame him. You know, just for context so that uh, our viewers understand, uh, this is to do with land that was taken over by the Mysuru Urban Development Authority. Uh, it, 3.16 acres of land belonging to the chief minister's wife and in turn Ms. Parvati, the chief minister's wife was compensated with sites in Vijayanagar, uh, which is a prime locality in uh, South Mysuru. The charge is that the value of the land which was given in lieu of the village land that was taken runs into the hundreds of crores. Uh, the charge being leveled by the BJP is that it could be up to 3,000 crore rupees. So, A, the demand is for a CBI probe. B, the demand is that the Chief Minister return this land now that direct charges are being leveled against him. And the third aspect is whether this is an internal Congress hit job, given that there is internal jostling within the Congress about who gets to be Chief Minister. Joining us for perspective on this broadcast is Bhaskar Rao, spokesperson of the Karnataka BJP. Uh, we've got with us Brajesh Kalappa, who's been with the Congress. We've got Sanjay Jha, uh, leading political analyst with us. We've got R.K. Upadhyay, uh, who's a political journalist in Karnataka. Sandeep uh, Anirudhan joins us, convener of the Citizens Agenda for Bengaluru. And we've got uh, Nagarjun Dwarkanath, who's the Bureau Chief of uh, India Today in Karnataka. I want to go across first to Brajesh Kalappa, because the Chief Minister has been relatively clean in his financial dealings in his four decades of being in politics. Now the BJP senses they found an opportunity in this Muda scam. They are going for the jugular, demanding a CBI probe, trying to turn his name to dust. You've heard the Chief Minister's defense. Do you find it acceptable or do you think at the very least Chief Minister Siddharamaya need to return this 38,200 83 square feet in Vijayanagar right away and accept some kind of an independent probe. A CBI probe may appear partisan to him, but some kind of an independent probe which restores the faith of the citizens of Karnataka. Uh, see, Rahul, uh, I don't know I, because I, I'm not with the chief minister now. And if I were with, with the chief minister, I would have certainly advised him that uh, this entire issue has been mishandled uh, you know, by him. Because uh, the first thing is it's an issue of land acquisition. Land acquisition has become extremely difficult after 2013, after the passage of the Land Acquisition Act. In fact, after the Land Acquisition Act today, if a land loser is uh, asked by either the BDA or the MUDA or where, wherever, whichever agency, which is a developmental agency, he is invariably going to say no because, one, the, uh, the act itself gives him two and a half times the value of the uh, the, the guidance value of the property. Therefore, land acquisition has become an extremely difficult part now. And it's not just in Karnataka, it's across the country, whether it's Meerat or whether it's, you know, Haryana, whether it's Uttar Pradesh, elsewhere. Everywhere, the issue of land acquisition has become a big problem. And uh, for land development and for people to be able to be given lands, it has genuinely become a problem. So, therefore, Land losers today, if they decide to go for litigation, then invariably it's the agency, which is the developmental agency, which loses. Therefore, they have to always strive to have some kind of a consensual approach where the land loser readily comes forward to lose, you know, to hand over the land. So it's this this whole thing is playing out. And honestly, I, to the best of my knowledge, because I've also worked with Mr. Sidramaya, he's absolutely clean. There's no doubt about it. There's not even a whisper across the board that, you know, he's uh, dishonest or that he has cheated or whatever. It's just the, a matter of circumstance that he has today found himself in this kind of a situation. No, so I you're calling it a matter of circumstance and I'll put that to Bhaskar Rao because in yeah. what I have understood of Siddharamaiya's defense, the strongest argument is that this goes back to 2021 when it was the BJP government in power 
uh, that the decision was taken to allocate alternate land under this 50-50 scheme. So if something happens on the watch of the BJP, you know, how is it a scam perpetuated by the chief minister? If at all there are crooks in the BJP administration at that time, they're the ones who should be prosecuted for this, Mr. Rao. See, this entire process, like what Vijesh mentions, land acquisition, land notification, and then denotification, smacks of only corruption as well as personal gains. Mr. Siddharamaya is very much aware under what circumstances he got the land which was purported to have been gifted by his brother-in-law to his wife. Land gets acquired, land gets notified, land gets denotified. Then again, this in this process, when ordinary people are fighting to get compensation for land lost over there, no, but you're not answering my question. No, you're leveling that no, Siddharamaya perpetuated please, some kind of a scam. I'm saying that this happened when the BJP was in power in 2021. Respond to my question, sir. It is not the question of when it has happened or when it has not happened. Even when if you are in power also, if you are given land over there, is it not your duty to return it if it is not according to law over there? It has happened very much. And in the process over there, he makes a claim of 62 crore rupees over there for amount of land that he has lost over there. Nobody has made any personal allegation against Mr. Siddharamaya in the last 40 years. This is for the first time, as Brijesh says, either has been mishandled or probably he's on his last leg of political career. He has been cajoled into making such decisions over there. It is definitely a scam over there. When you are demanding 62 crores for a small piece of land that you parted and you got it over there and 14 piece parcels of land that you are in possession of, is it not a scam? Whether it is BJP or Congress rule, scam is a scam over there. Okay, now just hold that. Sanjay Jha, even if in 2021 Siddharamaya was not chief minister, he still was former chief minister and one of the foremost political figures of Karnataka. Just the fact that, you know, some 3.16 acres of village land, uh, you get something far more valuable in South Mysuru as a result of that at Vijayanagar. That by itself reeks of a scam. That you're giving up some village land, you're getting more prime land. You don't have to be chief minister. You're still a political person of high influence and you're using your position, your name, your past position to be able to swing this, even if you're not in power yourself at that time. Rahul, I have two points to make. Number one, I think the BJP needs to reconcile to the reality that it was voted out of power because of corruption and that 40% Sakara tag was not just rhetoric. There were serious allegations and I think they cannot really run away from that truth. The second is I have, you know, handled a lot of, uh, lot of debates where the BJP went, I remember after Robert Vadra in 2013, uh, 2G, coal, and we have seen nothing really has come out of it. What they are very good at, and I need to congratulate the BGP for that, is to make a mountain of a molehill. As you rightly pointed out, here is a high-profile former chief minister when that decision was taken. If a certain land is transferred to him, clearly the BGP government was aware of what was going on. So while I agree with you entirely that, you know, as an individual, Everyone would like to ensure that their reputation is not tarnished and they must make sure that they come clean. But it's pretty palpable to the naked eye that the BJP has obviously got a lot to explain for in terms of their own action or uh, inaction when the land was allocated. No, Bhaskar, I'll respond to what uh, Sanjay Jha is saying. But, but there, there is merit in that argument. If he did this on his watch, it's a massive scam, no doubt. If this happened when the BJP is in power, morally he is wrong and it looks bad, the optics are wrong. But he didn't take that decision. You did. Now, going back to it is like taking a defense on behalf of Siddharamaya. Today, you stand exposed, claiming 62 crore rupees, taking 14 parcels of land in Kappar. You explain that. Going back and saying that it happened during BJP regime, etc. is not an argument that needs to be taken over there. No, but why when not? It happened on your watch. You shouldn't have allowed listen, it to happen. Listen to me now. Listen to me. When you have been in a position of power and you are manipulated to see that this land comes in your name over there, is it not unethical in your part? Does but that's a good argument, you know, which is why this is so complicated. 
because if you have something worth a hundred rupees and somebody gives you something worth five hundred rupees, you take it. RK Upadhyaya, if you take it, it to me. you can't say, oh, you know, they gave it to me, so what's the problem? I'm not in power. It's the BJ. It's that the whole you scratch my back, I scratch your back. That's how Karnataka politics is as messy as it is. RK Upadhyaya, what are you making of it? You cannot now, take a ever since the, the scam came into the open, I've been of the opinion that the Chief Minister, uh, you know, ever since the scam came into the open, the Muda scam, I've been of the opinion that the Chief Minister would have done well by himself if he had openly said, look, I don't know what has happened in this case. I was not involved. It was my, uh, you know, my wife who got the land and then, you know, a compensated land and all that. So whatever it is, as a chief minister, now I'm ready to order an inquiry, you know, a judicial inquiry. And if irregularities are proved, I'm ready to hand over those land back to the government. I would not only do that, I would make sure that all those who bought irregular sites, you know, would be cancelled. So that would have Very cleared good. the air. Correct. Clear is there. But you know, the problem with that stand would be there are hundreds of very, very important people who have got the land, not just from Congress, many, many parties. I know about one particular politician who has got 53 sites in that place. So, this is a huge scandal which has been going on for years, at least for two decades. And Sidramaya's wife happens to be one of the beneficiaries. So, it's not very easy for him to announce that you know he's going to uh, you, know, ha- uh, you know just surrender those sites. Because he's going to expose a whole lot of other people who will not be happy with what he's been doing. So this is a scam of mammon proportions. And he, if he's really, you know, interested in clearing his name, he needs to just say that this is what I'm going to Nagarjun do. Nagarjun Dwarkanath, how is this playing out politically in Karnataka? Is the chief minister feeling the pressure? Are people buying his defense? What's your sense by speaking to citizens and to politicians across the aisle? Shall I answer this? Nagarjun Dwarkanath. Since 15 minutes or... Of- since 15 months of post-election, uh, Rahul, this is the first time that BJP has something to hold on to in terms of building a narrative against the Congress government. And now they have the trump card that the case is against Sidharama himself. The allegations, it's against the man in the chair. So they also have something to show to the high command in the last 15 months, which was a, you know, a, a calm situation for BJP. Now they are going aggressive because the Congress is on a back foot. On paper, does it look fishy? Yes, it looks fishy. Uh, morally, as well as uh, there are irregularities being seen in Muda as well, not just with Sidramaya and his wife, but also people who have been beneficiaries. An inquiry has been ordered because uh, CM feels that others also have been benefited. So CM has ordered a judicial inquiry into the whole Muda site allotment since 2005. He feels that not just me, but let everything in the last 20 years come to the field and let the people decide what it is. The CM is feeling the pressure, not just him, but the whole Congress party. Today they are getting into a huddle and tomorrow most likely DK Shivkumar is holding a press conference as to how politically will the Congress party fight this out in the streets because uh, from Wednesday next week BJP is taking on a Padayatra to Mysore the Congress is preparing for the next 24 hours how to politically answer the BJP in in the state of Karnataka Sandeep Anirudhan, the voters of Karnataka got rid of the BJP thinking that they were corrupt, now you've got a government which is facing all manner of charges uh, as a citizen working with the citizens' agenda for Bengaluru, how do you look at, you know, one government which was seen as being highly corrupt and inept now being replaced by a government which again is facing not just this one scam on the Mysuru Urban Development Authority but also the Valmiki scam is just kind of building up. Rahul, uh, there is this. Uh, I'd like to remove this illusion that there are different parties because from uh, our experience. Uh, most politicians in Karnataka are all from the same fraternity. They keep switching uh, parties very often. They meet and uh, uh, have dinner and drinks every evening and they work together. This has been our experience because when the BJP was in power, uh, there was a Congress uh, minister, uh, ex-minister whose real estate holding needed an access of an illegal road in a lake buffer zone and it was the BJP MLA in our area who was pushing for it. And apparently the deal was done between the chief minister's office and that ex-minister and things like that. This is how it's like they keep scratching each other's backs, Uh, big scams happen. Uh, The unfortunate thing is in Karnataka, the, the grain of politics is corruption and this is most unfortunate because we don't see politicians seem to be 
even in the least manner inclined to deliver public service they are not interested in policies they are not interested in governance they are not interested in planning and as a result our state and especially our cities look at bengaluru it's crumbling because of the lack of respect for law there is absolute lawlessness because when people at the top are corrupt how are they going to enforce laws at the bottom i mean they themselves are uh, do you accept rajesh kalappa that this is giving the congress government in karnataka a terrible name that the image the shine the sheen you know karnataka was a big catch for the congress winning it from the bjp in a direct face off was a strong message but if this is how the state is going to be run you know look at the maharishi valmiki corporation scam again you know where my, uh, an officer commits suicide uh, he says that there's been an unauthorized transfer of 187 crore rupees money being wished away all of this together just leaves a terrible taste in the in the mouths of the voter no absolutely the the congress party is facing a serious credibility crisis there is no doubt there is no running away from that fact absolutely and particularly at a time when the person with the highest credibility in the congress party that is the chief minister when he himself is facing charges and he is unable to answer them for like i said i have an answer but i think uh, he should have had a better answer. what do you think he should do at the very least do you think he should give up this land which is in his uh, wife's name in vijayanagar just say okay i'm giving up this land let there be this judicial probe let's see who else also benefited we'll take action against all no see the point is rahul that the bjp is also a beneficiary there are bjp ministers who have got 300 400 sites there are ex mlas you know everybody is a beneficiary here now that's the and problem like baskar rao that when this judicial when this inquiry comes they'll be in, and because this happened on the watch you know this is the problem with states like karnataka they function as if you know only the cast of characters change but the modus operandi doesn't so there'll be more than enough bjp leaders when this uh, you know list comes out of who benefited in mysore urban the development the area issue. the hablot watch issue was is also a question of credibility so merely returning the property doesn't absolve you of your wrong doing of having accepted and taken it away no but you do know that there will be lots of bjp beneficiaries as well what about let them, them be, let everybody be punished let everybody be punished it has come to light only now and the chief minister cannot escape is in absolute denial that the, the problem sanjay jha with the there will be bjp beneficiaries argument is that here you've got the chief minister the king of the chess board even if the bjp has to give up a few pawns a few rooks it doesn't matter if you've got the you king on the mat the bjp is looking for this the opportunity they'll now go for the congress's jugular you you, you know uh, rahul let me be very very forthright mr sidhe domaya needs to be a smarter man at his political communication here i think brijesh is absolutely right you know the bjp epitomizes corruption in karnataka i don't think that is faded from public memory now here mr sidhe ramaya needs to come publicly and say it not once but say it a hundred times that i am the one who has ordered an inquiry i am also the one who is going to do it retrospectively i was not there when this decision was taken and be aggressive about that you know you know it rahul in politics you got to be competitive and aggressive at all times i mean this is the bjp which is renowned for ready brothers because it stuck over a period of time and it was pretty much out there for the world to know mr yadurappa's track record is for all to see but the bottom line is i think mr sidharamaiya needs to bat on the front foot and i think somebody is right you know if i was him and if i have had an impeccable political career record no, but like how can you bat um, how can you bat on the front foot let, let me let me one, one second you have a patch of land which is worth a certain amount Just you in, instead of that baskar rao allow me to speak please i'll come to you in a moment instead of the land that's being acquired you get a piece of land which is far more valuable than what you've given up i mean what front, front foot are you talking about uh, sanjay ja how can you be on the front foot when the whole the whole transaction uh, the whole transaction yeah, reeks of that? something being terribly wrong sanjay ja i'm coming to rajesh in a moment sanjay yeah so so rahul you are absolutely right i mean this is what politics is about you got to take the bull by the horns he needs to say 
that there is going to be an inquiry and if the inquiry says it is wrong it will be returned but at the same time as you rightly pointed out in the program let the entire can of worms be out because i'm 100% convinced this is a problem if there is one is a one involving the entire political ecosystem so let let the chief minister really kind of address the problem up front and he's got a great career track record as you've been pointing out and i'm sure he wouldn't like to besmirch his entire reputation on the basis of one land transaction he should rajesh kalapa wants to explain how the chief minister should explain how he had a piece of land which was worth less in his in its turn got land which was worth much more and this no, is see, this is his wife who is benefiting the, like i said the situation is you know it is it has been exacerbated after the passage of the land acquisition act of 2013 we see matters in court every day where a land loser is now claiming two and a half times the value of the land which has been, has been lost because the act allows for it right so therefore you have the, to the land loser today is the king he can today decide well, what my value of the land has to be or else i go to court and the entire project is jinxed right so therefore development authorities across the country are having a problem i don't blame the land acquisition act it's a good act that people are getting uh, you know rational uh, you know amounts for their land loss and because land of course as you know keeps rising so this is the ultimate answer to this question also the other aspect is that th this land doesn't belong to mr sidrama it belongs to his wife which was handed over by her brother ultimately that's a decision she has to take and you know within the family no, one second so if my wife does something can i just uh, wash my hands off no, this i'm not even it, in public office no, no. whether it's me or my wife you know as a family you are accountable can mr kalappa Mr Siddaramaiya just turn around and say i have no idea what my wife is doing like she must be doing something but i have no idea about it come on seriously no no I, see see honestly rahul i don't know you probably have some kind of a command over your wife i don't certainly don't claim to have any command over mine if my wife were in a similar situation i would have to tow her line do you buy that bhaskar rao that you know there, there is some no. argument no, obviously the, the wife has agency wife, yeah, but this is also a man in public wife. office if it's a normal equation yeah, i can buy wife. that but when you're in public office now if uh, somebody's wife does something or somebody's son does something let, can let they me, get away by say we don't know anything about it you take the constitutional and legal position it is not a question of my wife or whose wife who has got which kind of how, how much of control over their wife he is answerable Nobody for that nobody has any control anyway let's start you know growth. let's start let's not go down this is a very dangerous slope that rajesh kalappa has sent us down but let's just respond to your partner having agency and the right to decide which is not linked to the chief minister yes paskara the when he is demanding 62 crores as compensation it is not the question of his my wife or my brother in law etc it is set legal position and if theft was going on if wrong doing was going on if you have been caught at this point of time and as brijesh himself pointed out that congress party is facing a credibility crisis led by its own chief minister now as someone said that he should have returned it and asked for an inquiry openly instead he is in a denial he said i have not committed anything they have refused to have a discussion today in the assembly saying that we don't want to even discuss this matter and the judicial commission gets appointed one day before the assembly so uh, are you by the you buy this Wait, argument from rajesh kalapa you know i see a lot of legal books there. behind him so he's obviously taken a legal position uh, my wife are i have no control over what she does is up to her how can i be held responsible for what my wife says are you by the now i think uh, it's uh, totally unacceptable especially when personal integrity is involved Correct. let me bring it here you know what happened in 2013 and 19 when sidramaiah was you know had his first term there was this uh, you know big arkavati land denotification uh, you know scandal which where people heard, were heard saying that 600 crores change hands but this was done for the party and that's why you know it didn't become such a big issue thing but here you know the personal integrity of the chief minister has been questioned and that is where the problem arises just like mr ramkrishna had faced when revaji to land scam came up in 85 yes. at the height of his popularity you know he had to resign that's because you know he had uh, allowed uh, the land uh, conversion when there was a land sealing act to uh, you know one of his relatives Na so nagarjun how much traction do you think this issue could get could it become much bigger become a real millstone around the chief minister's neck or do you think it will blow over in a few days uh, absolutely it will become other unless he, you know he finds way of getting out of it 
one of the ways I suggested is that you know he should come openly into this and then you know tell the people this is what has happened. Nagarjun, how do you see this Rahul, play out you know, from here? Nagarjun. Rahul, in fact, I think uh, this will be played out by BJP for the next two weeks also, considering they are taking up a Padhyatra. But will this go to a logical end? Will will the BJP seek any resignation and will the Congress reply by giving resignation of any ministers or be it chief minister or any cabinet minister? I don't think that would happen because the Congress for once is saying that we will also answer this uh, Politically, they also are planning to do a reverse Padayatra, maybe from Mysore to Bangalore, or maybe hold a big rally in Mysore, giving out the facts of the details of how, uh, in fact, uh, there are court cases to court that even Sidramaya's wife is eligible to get the land because High Court has given lands to such same same cases, is yeah. what Sidramaya is saying. But in the next 15 days after uh, the BJP's Padayatra, I don't see this going to any logical end, uh, in, specifically to the Muda scam, but in Valmiki's scam, I think uh, there are more feathers in the government that will be roughed up in the coming few days. No, so let's spend a moment around that. How do you see the Valmiki scam uh, really play? Because Minister Nagendra has already tendered his resignation, the enforcement directorate has arrested him. No, it's not just the Muda scam. The fact that there are Lamborghinis involved, uh, money is being sent to Telangana for the elections, uh, it, it's really not looking good, Sanjay Jha, from the Congress's perspective. Here you've got the in, enforcement director getting fully involved, claiming 90 crore rupees was diverted from the corporation used to buy liquor before the general elections. Money was sent into 18 bank accounts in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. If that's the case, those bank account details will be available. Uh, this is a case that can be pieced together. Not just is there a scam, it's being done with very limited finesse. It's very easy to catch. It's all happening in bank accounts. You know, to be to be honest with you, Rahul, I'm I'm very disappointed when I heard about this particular scam, uh, and and really, uh, Karnataka is the one that resulted in the political resurrection of the Congress. Uh, you know, thereafter it has seen better successes. Uh, I do believe that uh, this will be a huge missed opportunity because the victory against the BJP, which looked formidable at that point, uh, sent out a message that people were winning to, uh, or rather not just winning for, for the Congress, but hoping for a dramatic transformational change. Clearly, that doesn't seem to have happened, at least where these allegations of, uh, you know, the gravy train seem to be heading. So uh, a course correction is required. And I do hope that there is no arrogance setting in because this is one of the biggest uh, fault lines of all political parties. Right. They begin to see a uh, green shoot and then everyone begins to dream big. But first, you need to get your house in order. So I completely no, agree with you. Because the BJP's that charge is, is that they've been well. out of power for so long. Now, like yeah. hungry wolves, they're trying to catch whatever prey they can because they don't know how long they'll be in power to make all the money you no, can no, now that, that you have an opportunity. Ana no, no, that is not a correct analogy. I, I object to your using those words over there. That is not the correct analogy over there. They have committed a fault, they committed a crime, and they're paying for it. It is not BJP which went looking for them over there. No, that's a fair point because remember, in no, the Valmiki a, scam in particular, like hungry you know, uh, uh, the account superintendent of the Valmiki Scheduled Tribes Development Corporation Limited, Chandrasekhar Pri, he committed suicide on the 26th of May, leaving behind a note in which he revealed that there was an unauthorized transfer of 187 crore. So, Brajesh Kalapa, you know, the fact is, it's not as if you can lay the blame only on the BJP. Obviously, once they find an opportunity, they'll do what they can to hit you politically, and that's only logical. But you've got an official who actually committed suicide because he was under duress, and he left this note behind, which is how the scam came to light. No, absolutely. As far as the uh, the uh, ST scam is concerned, I think uh, it's a rather serious issue. But of course, having seen the BJP uh, operate, so the fact that you know the ED is involved and all that. that no, so why of not? Gives... Of course, if there's a scam, why shouldn't the enforcement directorate get involved? No, no. See, ultimately, you you have to also keep in background the fact that the ED had played similar politics in Jharkhand. What happened? The chief minister got out scot-free. He was completely acquitted of all charges. No, but there's a difference. Here an official has committed is suicide, today, leaving behind a out, suicide like note. And, and, and you can say that are, money... But the ED that... is a damned organization. I don't think anybody in the country has any confidence in the ED. So you bring a better organization, recreate the ED. I don't say anything. But the ED today is damned. No, but that doesn't really make much of a difference you in the sense that there will be a probe. And if the probe throws up details, if the details are strong, 
there will be consequences of it and at this moment the Congress government in Karnataka is facing a very tough situation because it's not just one charge that's been leveled, multiple charges uh, being leveled at the Chief Minister and at his ministers. Sandeep Anirudhan wants to come in and make a quick final point before I end. Sandeep. Last point. Last point. So, uh, the question I ask of the Chief Minister is this. He, he purportedly had a clean image all the time, right? Remember, we had a Manmohan Singh who had a very clean image, but very his different. entire cabinet was corrupt. And then we had this huge anti-corruption movement across the country. Now, are we facing a similar situation where the CM claims to be clean and the rest of his cabinet is corrupt and the entire government machine is corrupt? No, but I in the Muda scam, the charge is on the CM's family itself. So, it's not as if Manmohan Singh never had any charges against his own family. I mean, they were all in yeah, academics and doing other things far from public scam. office. So, I think all no. the guests have spoken. This, Please I think Sanjay Jha hit the point. nail on the head when he said that this was a big victory for the Congress. It could have really been a model state. That this is what the BJP did. Look at how we are governing the state. Look at how we are different. Instead, as Sandeep Anirudh says, it's really more of the same. And that is really to the dismay and misfortune of the wonderful people of Karnataka that uh, both the parties proving to be different sides of the same corrupt coin. Very, very problematic. Uh, I want to thank my guests for joining us.